Hi, I'm Graham Ezzy. I'm a professional windsurfer and I do coaching every Sunday. I do live coaching. Uh, at the moment, we're doing it all through a Facebook group called Graham Ezzy's Windsurf Coaching Community, uh, which you can see here. So everyone can post uh, photos, videos, or questions, and uh, there's discussion during the week. And then on Sundays, I do a live stream where I go through uh, coaching of what was posted during the week. And all of uh, the members of the group can ask questions, and of course, I, I answer them. Um, everyone is welcome to join. It's all free. It's just Ezzy Coaching on Facebook, uh, or you can search Graham Ezzy's Windsurf Coaching Community. Uh, you're watching this on YouTube. This video is going to be a more of a deep dive, um, more of a in-depth discussion. And so I'm planning to do more of these videos going forward uh, where I'm taking a single maneuver and doing a really close look at it, um, which is not something that's really possible in the format of the live stream. Today we're talking about Wave 360s. Um, videos like this are brought to you by um, all of these champions on the left here who are members of our group who have uh, donated to help create content like this. Um, so thanks to these guys, thanks to these guys. Um, we've got a great team in the coaching group and you're welcome to join if you're not a member already. Um, I'm going to be posting more videos like this to YouTube. So subscribe to the channel so you get notified and let me know in the comments what other topics you're interested in. Um, today we're talking about Wave 360s and I've got a list of other moves to go over, uh, but you know, I'm guiding my coaching around what you want. So post in the comments what you want to learn. All right. So let's get into the Wave 360. So the Wave 360 is a maneuver that is very difficult and it has a lot of hero status in windsurfing. Uh, you know, not many people can do Wave 360s and in competition, a Wave 360 is a very high scoring maneuver. One of the things that sets the Wave 360 apart from maybe other tricks that are done on the Wave is it is almost all about timing. And so it's a real test of a wave rider's fundamentals, whether they can do a wave 360 or not, because it requires a lot of awareness about the wave and about the timing and getting to the right place on the wave at the right time to be able to do the rotation back inside uh, the wave. So we're gonna talk about different aspects of the wave 360 how to get into trying them. There are some, you know, different styles of Wave 360. So let's let's watch um, this this video. So this is some of my Wave 360s uh, that I put together, and we can watch just the base, the different styles. Um, and one of the things that I think makes the Wave 360 so difficult to learn is that when we say wave 360 in windsurfing, we're actually talking about different moves um, that are similar but are different. Um, so there's maybe three, two or three different moves um, that we actually all call a wave 360. Um, and they're, they're very different approaches um, to the maneuver. And so as you can see here, in the videos um, that I'm playing. These are all, some of them are similar to each other, but they're all pretty different approaches. So for example, if we go back to this first one and we go through it a bit more slowly. So this is a, a vertical approach and doing the rotation inside the lip. This next one is more of a, a carving maneuver, again, with a, a vertical or over vertical approach um, coming around with more than a complete bottom turn. So those two are, are kind of similar. Then this one, this one's quite a departure uh, where it's, it's less of a vertical approach 
and it's more of an aerial maneuver landing back on the wave and this one is is even more of an aerial maneuver so this one is going almost straight down the line almost no bottom turn at all coming around and landing um, and so these are all wave 360s in windsurfing uh, but they require a different technique so I would say that they're somewhat different moves um, and the more of these variations on the way 360 you can do then the more conditions that you can do a wave 360 in you know it's um, like we said before it's, it's all about timing and placement and so it depends a lot on what the wave is like so for example in this wave I'm bottom turning there's the the section sort of right in front of me right behind me and I'm, I'm able to come up again over vertical hit the lip and do the rotation whereas the 360 um, just beforehand which is a very different kind of 360 it, it's it's a very different wave right so so the same kind of maneuver just wouldn't work on this wave and so the more kinds of 360s that you can do then the more that you can make them uh, because then it, there's a wider variety of, of conditions that that you can do the 360 in i want to say and I, th and I think it's really important to mention that you know if you're just watching the videos and and highlights you see a lot of 360s from the pros but we crash a lot as well um there is nobody that makes 360s 100% of the time. Uh, and in some locations, it's a lot more difficult than others. So there are some locations like in Cabezo, for example, um, where you have a, a, a particular bowl that sets up somewhat consistently that, that makes it easier maybe to find the section to do the 360 um, than in other places. Some days at Hokipa as well, you have a bowl section that's setting up uh, that makes it makes it easier to do the 360s um, but in general it's a maneuver that you're not going to be a hundred percent consistent on and so I want to show here here are some of my crashes just so you guys can see that I'm also crashing a lot and everyone is um, and you know, there's there's something to be learned as well from each of these each of these crashes. So I'm going to go through looking at these, and we've got some footage that has been submitted by members of the Facebook group. We're going to look at different types of 360s, what's going on, uh, what what's happening um, in the ones, what's causing the the crashes, and what's causing the makes. Um, what are some things to think about? What are some things to be aware of um, in the Wave 360? So what I want you to pay attention to here um, in these in these crashes is is just that you know it's it's not a maneuver that you're going to be 100% consistent on, and that's okay. Um, you know, you recognize that it's it's a difficult maneuver and and approach it with with respect. And I think that will make a better learning experience for you because you'll have less pressure on yourself and then it will just help um, the progress that you have in the maneuver. All right, so we're going through these these crashes and we've got some, some user submitted videos. So this is from Tomaz, who's a member of our group. This is from Mario, it's also a member of our group. Mario again. And so we're gonna go through these videos. And here's Caro, also a member of our group. Um, and so we're gonna go through these and, and look at what what's being done right and what is being done wrong. Um, before we get into that, I wanna clear up some terminology. So as I said before, what we call a wave 360 is actually a lot of different moves. 
Now, you might be familiar with the goo screw. What is the goo screw? A goo screw is an Air 360 that is landed off the back of the wave. You know, the goal when we're doing a wave 360 is to land in front of the wave, but sometimes we land off the back of the wave, and that is called a goo screw, uh, named by Mark Angulo. So Mark Angulo is the inventor of the Wave 360 and the um, goo screw as well. So the goo screw is kind of like a halfway made Wave 360 or an off the back Wave 360. So it's it's not a full failure of an attempt, you know. And, and when you're learning Wave 360s, um, you know, doing a goo screw is is a success. Um, as you're then trying to land the move, maneuver back in front of the wave, um, a goose screw is, is not a success. But so it's all relative to to your level here. But so this this is an example of a of a goose screw where I'm doing the an air 360 and landing out the back of the wave. I, I fall on that, but it's it's another example. Or this this as well is an example of a of a goose screw. So it's an Air 360 that's landed out the back of the wave. And so when you're, here's another one. And so when you're learning, you can break the maneuver down into trying to learn the goose screw first, and then trying to, to do the 360 landing it back in front of the wave. Or you can just start with, with the 360. I think both approaches are valid uh, when you're trying to learn the wave 360. There are a few key elements to the maneuver that are true no matter how you're doing it or where you're doing it, what kind of conditions you're doing it in. One is you want to have a lot of speed. Speed helps with everything in windsurfing because the more speed you have, the easier it is to balance, um, the less your mistakes matter or the less the um, imperfections in the wave matter. So the faster you're going, the more you just blow through chop you blow through a funky lip that's breaking strange. Um, so you want to be going fast. Going fast is good. Uh, and, you know, th this is maybe one of the reasons why the, the maneuver is, is more advanced is because in order to really do them well, you need to ha be able to bottom turn with some speed, which is, which is difficult in itself. You know, the bottom turn is one of the most difficult aspects of wave riding. Um, and depending on the kind of conditions, you know, you might be in onshore conditions and then it's even more difficult to keep speed in that front side bottom turn. But so you want to have speed. You want to have a wide grip on the boom. Having a wide grip on the boom gives you more control over the rig um, and it allows you to have an easier time pulling everything through the eye of the wind, which is happening in the, in the 360 maneuver. Another very important aspect is that you want to keep that front hand really with that front arm bent and really close to your hips. So as you can see here, I've got my front hand pulling the sail down towards my hips um, while I'm sheeting out with my back hand. And so this, this is the position that you want to be in when you're taking off. And it, it doesn't really matter what kind of wave 360 you're doing. That's the position that you want to have. Um, so like when we look at the next, the next clip, which is similar but slightly different kind of wave 360, I'll have a very similar body position. So wide grip, my hand is almost on the clips. Uh, we've got this front hand pulling down towards the hips and the back hand is sheeting out and the sail is, is sheeted out through most of the rotation. So one of the, the biggest mistakes, and we'll get into this more as we look at uh, the footage that's been submitted, but one of the biggest mistakes is sheeting in too early. So as you can see here, I'm sheeting out until here, right? And so if you look, I do most of the rotation before I sheet in. If we go back to that, that first 360, you'll see a similar uh, process with the sheeting in. So sheeting out, sheeting out, sheeting out, still sheeting out, still sheeting out, and I start sheeting in here, which you can see that the rotation is, is already finished at that point. Um, and if you sheet in too early, uh, it can disrupt the rotation, um, and you, you're killing the contact that you have with the wave, you're killing your momentum 
um, which makes it more difficult to do do the maneuver. Um, so you want to approach the wave with this position. So you want to have a lot of speed. You can help to have power in your sail. And you have the front arm bent and close to your hips. Your back hand is extended, sheeting out the sail. We can watch um, a few more of these, and you'll see that the the positions are pretty similar. So this is a, a slightly different kind of, of, of 360, and my positioning is a, a little bit different, uh, but but very similar, very similar concept. So it shifted a little bit where I'm I'm still kind of setting up. So both arms are more bent here as I'm taking off. And then this is more the position um, where I'm making contact with the other ones, where my, my front arm is bent, back arm is straight. And then again, I really only sheet out once the rotation is finished. Um, here again, this is a very different kind of rotation, but still quite similar body position where I sheet it out. And then I start sheeting in really upon landing. Um, we're gonna I can watch a few more of these with you just just to show that no matter where or what kind of 360 you're doing it's a very similar body position so here's one where I'm coming very far around in the bottom turn that front arm is bent back arm is sheeted out stay sheeted out start sheeting in right about here and as you can see, the board's already fully rotated. So that is an important part of, of the maneuver. We'll watch this one. Again, front arm bent close to the hips. Back arm is extended. The sail is sheeting out. We've got a wide grip on the boom, which gives you more control and then sheeting in, I start sheeting in about here. So again, the boards are already completely pointing back towards the beach. The common, the other common factor that all of these have is that it's really all about the timing. So you wanna get that high five contact. So this is something that we talk about in the coaching group and we talk about it a lot because this is true for cutbacks and off the lips and aerials. And it's also true for the way through 60s. High five is the contact that the lip makes with the bottom of the board. And you wanna get that lip as it's throwing to line up exactly with the flat bottom of your board. You don't want it to hit on an angle like this. You don't want it to hit the rail. You want it to hit the flat bottom of the board between your feet and that's what gives you the projection and so that's what when you get that high five contact so here you can see I'm hitting that section exactly as it starts to pitch and that high five contact transfers the energy of the wave into the board speed which is which is what you want um, and so what you'll see in, in almost every single 360 in windsurfing, wave 360, is that it's that critical moment where the wave energy is pushing forward and it's connecting with the flat part of the bottom of the board, getting that high five, which gives the board the speed and projection and allows you to land in front of the wave. Um, and that's that's really the the number one thing about about doing the wave 360. And so a lot of that has to do with with timing, and a lot of it has to do with placement. So when we're talking about wave 360s, we often talk about bowls. So like 360 bowl. And so you're looking for the part of the wave that has that shape, um, because the the flat or crumbly part of the wave is not going to have the the lip that you're going to be able to connect with to get the high five to project you out. Um, so like when the pros are talking about 360s, we often talk about 360 bowl. So, oh, there's a 360 bowl at Hokipa in front of the first rock. 
or there's a 360 bowl at Cabezo, uh, and or in silt. So you know sometimes there's a 360 bowl that sets up on the sandbar, and we're looking for those those bowls um, as a place to do a wave 360. And so here's another example where you can see that the wave is really setting up with a nice shape. It's really starting to, to pitch over. It's breaking more top to bottom rather than just crumbling. And that provides the power and projection. So then once I get my board in the lip with that high five contact, it's going to get thrown forward and carry me in front again. Uh, which is exactly what you want to do the wave 360. So it's it's more a maneuver that's about timing than about anything else. So I'm going to go through some of the submitted footage and we're going to talk about uh, what is maybe going wrong. I'm going to go then after that back through my crashes and talk about what I've what I'm doing wrong in these clips. And then after that, I've got some other 360s um, that are landed, but not as good as the first ones. And so they're, I think, a good um, good batch of, of 360s to look at uh, because they might be closer to what it looks like when you're learning 360s or when you're doing 360s for the first time. Um, because obviously looking at those 360s, which you know, I've been doing 360s since I was... 15 and those are, are some I'm very happy about um, It might not be so useful for you. Um, then we're also going to look at I've got some videos um, from from other riders in, in a more varied uh, group of conditions which also might be useful um, In my coaching, I think that you want to have a lot of um, different visual forms that you can refer to and so it can really help to watch this different footage and footage from different different places um, that helps imprint the correct body forms on your brain. Um, so let's get into this. So this is from Tomas. Uh, I believe this is in Sweden. And let's look at what's happening here and, and what's going wrong. So as uh, I've already said, one of the most important parts in the 360 is getting the timing and placement correct. And so not every wave and not every section is gonna be a 360 section. Um, you know, it's, it's just not possible to do a 360 on every wave. And you really have to find the right sections. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't practice 360s on almost every wave um, because you can work on the rotation, you can work on uh, the comfort of the approach and all of the above. Um, you know, on most waves. So let's look at what's going on here. So first of all, this section is a little crumbly. I, I don't see that that throwing lip. You know, there isn't isn't a bowl forming here, which means that it's going to be very difficult to do a proper 360 that that lands back in front of the wave because you don't have this projection. But anyway, let's let's approach this um, and looking at the technique anyway. So what the first thing I see here is that the body and hand positions are uh, not what I was talking about before. So you really want this, this front hand bent close to your hips and really sheeting out with the back hand. Um, so again, really, in this position, not not in this position. Uh, what Tomas is doing well is he's got a good wide grip on the boom, but I want to see this arm more bent, close to the hips, and this arm more sheeted out, sheeting out the sail. Um, something that we haven't talked about, but is also important, is where you're leaning. You want to be leaning into the circle. So if you're thinking of the the radius of your bottom turn as completing a circle, you want to be leaning into that circle, okay? And you can see that Tomas is leaning a little bit outside of it. Um, and so you want to be leaning into that, that circle. And sometimes it can really feel like you're leaning into the circle, but you're actually more upright on the board. And so like, for example, in this first turn, I really feel here like I'm leaning into the circle, 
But when I'm hitting the lip, I'm actually more more upright. Um, but if I'd not been leaning as far into the circle, then my body would be out here somewhere. And uh, that would not be so good for the dynamics of the move. And we can look, I'll show you some examples of that um, after we go through this footage. I can show you some examples where the, the body's not in that position um, and, and what happens then in the maneuver, maneuver. So this I think might be one. So I'm, I'm still leaning a bit into the turn, but you can see that as I'm hitting the section, I start, my body is slightly outside of that circle. And then as I come around, I'm no longer on top of the board, right? And so then the board is, is away from me and it's, it's hard to get my, my weight back on top of the board and I don't and, and I end up crashing here. Um, so let's, let's go back to Tomas's footage. So really what I want to see more of is, is leaning into that radius of the bottom term, keeping that front arm bent and near the hips and really sheeting out with the back hand, which the other important thing is finding the right section. Um, again, it's, it's so important to, to have the right section for the Wave 360. Uh, and so here he's, he's sheeting in. Um, and again, you really want to be sheeting out more and he starts shooting out again here uh, instinctively, um, but at this at this point it's it's too late. So what I want to see, Tomas, is that you uh, do what we're talking about, where you keep your front arm close to your hip, you're really shooting out, and then don't really do that much. Let the wave do the work for you. And so think of it. You can think of it, especially when you're trying the goose cruise, almost like a clue first back loop. And so you're gonna take off from the white water and then you, you can look over your shoulder and, and, and tuck up your feet but don't do that much with the sail just just leave the sail open and and let the rig uh, rotate as it naturally would and you'll feel if there's a moment where you can sheet in to to get the wind again once you're kind of already rotated um, but when you're learning in the beginning don't even think about sheeting in all right let's go to the next the next clip this is from mario Sorry, the resolution is not so good on this. Um, so this, again, we're talking about sections for the 360. This is not a section for a 360. The wave is crumbly. Uh, there's no bowl here. The, there's no lip where you're going to be able to get that high five contact. So this this is just not a section for a 360. It can be a section for a goose group, which is what I think Mario is trying here. Um, again, the principles for the goose group are, are very similar to the 360. What I like here is that Mario has this really wide grip. Um, but what I want to see is that that front arm really bent and close to the hips and the back arm really extended um, and then taking off and not sheeting in right away. So, I mean, even if he did the exact same um, position and the exact same motions with his body, but he kept the, um, the sail sheeted out and close to his hips, I think he would have landed this this goose screw off the back. Here's another one from Mario. So wide grip, that's what we like to see. Now the front hand here is also very far forward. So what I would like to see is this front hand moving closer to the harness lines, which will give more control over the whole sail. So I think the back hand is in a good place, but bring the front hand back. Um, in general, you don't want your front hand too far forward because it reduces uh, the amount of control and maneuverability that you have with the rig. All right, so coming coming up to the lip and going for the goose screw. So same comments as before. This front arm needs to be bent close to the hips and really sheet out with this back hand and then focus on getting getting some height and and then the gear will start to rotate naturally. You can tuck up your legs uh, to help with that rotation. Uh, but really it's all about this, this takeoff here and you wanna get that backhand sheeted out, front hand close to the hips. And that will make a world of difference. All right, so now we've got a clip from Caro. She's going for a goose screw. So she's got a, a, a good 
starting position where, you know, her front arm is close to her body and she is trying to sheet out. What I would like to see is a wider grip. So you can see that this back hand is, is kind of near her harness lines and that can go back, you know, about, about a half a meter, about a foot and a half, I would say, um, towards the, the end of her boom. And that will, again, just give a lot more control in the maneuver. Um, something that we see here is, again, is, is the timing. So there's really not much wave here. It's more like a chop. And so even for doing a, a goose screw, there's not a lot of potential because you need, you need the height. Um, you need to get the height from somewhere. And as you can see, like this is, this is not, not even really a wave at this point. And so even though um, Caro is doing a lot of the technique correctly at this point, um, just the, the wave is, is, is not there. And so you really need to focus on your wave selection and placement and timing. Um, again, the fundamentals are so important in whatever you're doing in windsurfing. And this is something that I'll, I keep coming back to in my coaching. The fastest way to get better in windsurfing and wave sailing is to focus on your fundamentals. Uh, whether you're, you're learning way through 60s or you're just working on bottom turns and cutbacks. Um, it's all about the fundamentals of wave selection, placement, and timing. Anyway, let's get back to the 360s. So had she been in the right place or if the wave had, had been steeper and she's going for the goose screw, what she would want to do is on takeoff, wait before sheeting in. So here she starts sheeting in. Um, we can see she's pulling in with a sail and really trying to rotate the rig with her body. What she instead wants to be doing is getting that lift off the, off the wave, feeling the rotation um, naturally come from just having that right body position and the right takeoff on the wave. And then she can sheet in towards the end of that, end of that rotation. Um, but sheeting in too early, as you can see, it starts pulling on the board and the, the forces um, start fighting each other. And you can see that, you know, so, so she's got the wake that's going this way. Uh, but then by sheeting in and leaning back, it's kind of fighting, fighting the dynamic of, of the, of the turn of the natural rotation. Um, and in these kind of conditions, you can do a bit of a jump. So you go into it with, with pretty bent, knees and then straighten those knees um, as you as you go off the lip um, which is a technique that that other other sailors do in, in a variety of conditions and we can look at those clips um, next now I want to quickly go through my clips and show what I'm doing wrong in the ones where I'm where I'm crashing and again this is a variety of different conditions and a variety of different uh, mistakes that I'm doing so here I'm going for a more down the line 360 and I just miss the high five contact. And so I'm not getting the full projection from the wave. So if you can see here, my, my board is not flat against the lip of the wave, you know, so the, the lip of the wave is, is hitting the rail of my board rather than the bottom of my board. So it's, it's not getting that direct high five contact. And so then you can see that like the wave is breaking here, but I'm staying in one place. Whereas if you get that high five, then the wave is projecting you forward and your board forward. And so I get a partial projection. So I, I, I still land in front of the wave, but I'm, I'm kind of under rotated and off axis um, because I didn't have that direct high five contact. contact. You know, my, my board wasn't exactly flat against the lip of the wave, um, you know, the, the bottom of my board, the face of my board wasn't exactly lined up with that contact. And, and that's what kind of screws up, screws up this, this rotation. And that hurts with the projection and hurts. Um, so projection in, in, in two ways. So like, it means that I'm not rotating as much. So I kind of under rotate. And then also I, I'm not really well positioned. I'm kind of off access. Um, not over the gear because of that. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. This is a pretty big wave. And here I'm just not really hitting the, um, the area that's 
that's pitching forward because in order to land in front of the wave you've, you've got to hit that that lip that that's coming coming forward and i think probably in this moment i was scared uh because this is a pretty big section and what i should have done is aimed probably right in here um but i was i was scared to hit that section and instead um went for this area where there's less less throw is is less critical um so i can I, you know i can see it now in here like this is the area where the power is where the wave is is throwing forward and so if i jammed my board up into this area i would have had the projection from all of this this wave and and i would have come in front but it is a pretty big wave um and there are obviously um some consequences with waves of this size. You know, I've, I've hurt my knee, um, which I have video of, but uh, not in this, not in this group. So here's another one where I'm going down the line, and I don't get that high five contact with the bottom of the board. So if you look, it's a little out of focus, but you can see that you know the lip is is coming. I've got the right timing. I'm I'm getting to the lip as it's throwing. But the angle of my board is completely wrong. You know, my the angle of my board is like this against the lip rather than like this. And so I just don't get the projection. And so what that means is that I, I'm not really rotating. It's not kicking me on top of the gear. So I'm underneath the gear. I'm under rotated. And it turns into just a big crash. Here's another one a bit more down the line. Um, lining up so here's another example where i'm leaning a bit out of the circle and it just i'm just kind of off a little bit off off balance so if if, if i were leaning more into the circle on the rotation um, i think i would have landed more over the gear more on top of the board rather than kind of my with my weight off the back of the board, which then uh, causes me to lose lose control and lose lose balance here. Um, here's here's another example. So this one, like we've already talked about, my weight is is not in the circle, and also my high five is not is not great. So I'm, I'm getting there again. It's, it's a good timing on this part of the wave, but I'm, my board is not perfectly flat against the lip and my weight is, is out of that circle. And so I'm not really landing on, on top of the wave and I'm not getting the projection. And so I end up going off the back. Um, here's the goose crew we already looked at. So this, here's another one. Um, so if I wanted to land this back inside, which I did, this I, is a not a success for what I was trying to do. I needed to hit this just a little bit later. So you can see that I'm approaching this lip too early. So it really starts to throw here. But at this point, I've already taken off. I'm already in the air. So I'm hitting it as it's about to pitch. And you can see I've got the good angle. My, my board is, is flat with the lip. But... It's just too early, so I'm not getting enough projection in front of the wave, and I, I almost, almost come in front, but um, ultimately, ultimately go out the back. Um, here's another example of a, of a goose group. In general, you don't want to do 360s going into the section. You want to do 360s going with the wave, right? So, see, I'm coming at the section. That's not the way to do 360s. Um, but it, it can be a way to do goose screws. So if you want to do big goose screws, this is this is a way to do it, kind of like this one. Um, but it, it's not really the way to do two 360s. You can do um, 360s like we're talking about that are more down the line. Um, but again, so I, I'm coming into a section. But again, you've got all this unbroken wave to land on, uh, which is which is pretty important. Uh, which isn't to say that it's impossible to do 360s going out a section. And in certain places like Pozo, you can see more and more 360s of that style. But in general, um, it's a lot more difficult. And um, so when you're learning, especially, you want to be going with 
with the section. Um, so here's another example where I'm kind of leaning out of the circle um, and my timing's also a little bit off. You can see that there's like this explosion that's happening a bit here. Um, so it seems like there's, there's more power in the lip here. So I'm actually a little bit out of place um, in this one. Again, timing is so critical in this maneuver. Um, here, again, I'm going into the section, which is not how you want to do 360s. I'm way too late. It's kind of a scary section and I just bail. Uh, so again, choose your section. All right. So now I want to get into some 360s that are landed, but they're not, they're not the best. Um, and we can look at what makes them less good than the first batch of 360s, and then also what you can learn from them. And they might be more similar to the 360s that you're doing when you're learning. So this section again, so I've got that body position where I'm bringing my, my front arm in and down, sheeting out with the backhand with a wide grip. Uh, my front arm could be a little bit closer to my hips. This section, there's not that much of a wave that's pushing against me, and so I'm really trying to fit my board into this section. You can see that I've got my board kind of upside down, and the reason to do that is to get that bottom of the board facing the lip, right? To get that, get that high five. Uh, but it's there's not that much power in this section. And so I land in the white water, um, but not uh, not really in front of the white water. So that's a make, but it's a little little less um, pretty. So here's one from a uh, more onshore location. So this is in Ginshu. Again, looking at the positioning, front arm bent down close to the hip, wide grip, pushing the clue out, sheeting out, leaning into the, the circle of the turn and getting that contact uh, with the lip, getting that high five contact right as the lip is pitching to get the projection in front. Um, and then a lot of times, especially when you're learning, you land on top of the sail. And what's really important when, when that happens is to just stay calm, let the white water pick you up. So keep your weight forward and then pull the sail out of the white water and keep going. Here's another one, um, which again is, is not, not an optimal um, wave to be doing it. You know, you can see that the wave is already broken. Um, the, you know, this is really not the right section, um, but I, I kind of am forcing this rotation. So again, the, the fundamental positioning here is this front arm is bent um, the back arm, wide grip, back arm is sheeting out, really sheeting out the sail, and then presenting the bottom of the board to the part of the wave that is is pitching um, to get that high five, which you can see that I do here. And then again, look, I'm not still not sheeting in. I'm, I'm sheeting out, I'm sheeting out, and I start sheeting in here, which again, the board is already pointing forward. Um, the sail gets stuck, but I pull it out. Um, which is just another another kind of kind of 360 um, for you to think about. All right, moving on to a different angle of a 360. So here again, critical body positioning like we've been talking about, presenting the bottom of the board, finding that timing and getting that projection. So here I'm kind of getting in this upside down position, um, but the reason I'm doing that is that that's what I need to do to get the bottom of the board presented to the lip to get that, that good high five. And you can see the projection that's happening here. So I present the board and then I'm not really doing anything with my body, but watch what the wave does in the next few frames to my, my board and my rig. Look, it's throwing it out in front. You see that energy that's being transferred from the wave to the board and it just throws throws it in front. So there, that contact is happening, that high five is happening between the feet and it throws the board around. And so see, I'm still sheeting out and all I'm doing is I'm letting the wave throw the board around. And then here I start to sheet in. 
and continue sailing on. So here's a more down the line approach. And again, same body positioning, same contact with the, with the lip. So what I like about this one is it's a lot less vertical. And in fact, you can go a lot less vertical than you think. So one of the big mistakes that I see is that people are really trying to go all the way around. They're trying to hit it at 12 o'clock and you simply don't need to. And a lot of times when you're trying to go so far around in the bottom turn, you're losing speed and because you're kind of like digging the board in and you're really forcing it and you're not getting the connection with the wave. And the connection with the wave is the most important thing. And a lot of times you can go more down the line with the Wave 360 than you think. Um, if you're already doing frontside aerials, a lot of times what the body position and the positioning for doing the 360, or not the body position, but the, the board position, the section positioning, um, is, is a lot more similar to a frontside aerial than you might think. Um, it's definitely a lot more similar to a frontside aerial than it is to like a vertical off the lip. Um, so, and this, this is an example of that. So I'm coming at this section right here as it's starting to pitch, presenting the bottom of the board, right? So that high five contact is happening between the feet, keeping the sail open, keeping the sail open. I'm looking with my head. Um, one of the things with a 360 is it's kind of a blind maneuver. Um, so you don't really see where you're going. Um, but like with everything in windsurfing and other sports, um, you want to look where in the direction that you're going. Um, so I'm, I'm looking with my head over my shoulder and here I start to sheet in, come down. This, my sail gets stuck a little bit, but uh, I've got enough speed that it's not an issue. Um, again, speed is so, so important in everything that you're doing. Um, here I'm trying to find a little section to do the 360. Um, there's not much of one. There's just a little bit of lip that's kicking forward here that I'm going to try to use that energy to do the 360. Again, because this section is suboptimal, the positioning is even more important because there's less um, wave to use. So again, I'm really focusing here on these fundamental aspects of the 360. So keeping this front arm bent close to the hips, having a wide grip, extending the back arm, sheeting out the sail, and leaning into the circle of the turn, and presenting the bottom of the board to the lip. And so how you, what position that is depends on the specifics of the wave, right? So you wanna get that bottom of the board so it's getting in contact with the lip, which then will project it. And so depending on where the wave is, it's gonna change what that angle is. So, so here I've got to get the board almost upside down to get that, that projection. But again, note that I'm not sheeting in. I'm still sheeting out, still sheeting out, and I start sheeting in here. So we, we can watch this in real speed. It's a bit of a forced 360. You know, it's, it's not an elegant 360. It's not the right section for it. But manage to pull it out, um, relying really on these fundamentals. And the wave is also big enough here um, that there still is some energy. So this kind of forcing it is not so possible. It's not easier the smaller the waves get. Um, so there's there's an example. Here's another example in onshore conditions. Kind of a similar, similar section, like around the corner of the wave. Um, and so there's a, just a little area here that I can see that's going to start kicking forward really focusing on the fundamentals, getting that board presented. And then see, I'm really letting the projection of the wave happen. And so it pr projects me up more than out in this one, but I'm not worried. I'm not cheating in the sail. I'm not trying to force it. Just letting it, it project, letting it fall down. And then I start to kind of sheet in um, and, and recover, recover the move. Um, that one, I had my legs a little bit more straight. You can also kind of tuck, tuck your legs up as well. Uh, but in general, you just want to let the wave do the work for you. Here's another example of one that's really down the line. And so this is a bit of a different uh, body position. And so like the takeoff is a lot more like an aerial, but then once I, I kind of start taking off, and again, here I do get this good high five contact. You can see that I'm, I'm 
I've got the board positioned so the bottom of the board is lining up with with the wave here and it, it gets that that push and then I've got that you know that front arm bent back arm sheeted out as I'm flying through the rotation and it, it's a bit of a weird 360 so I land a bit on my back um, but but still managed to pull it out and make it now this 360 I like because I think it's a lot closer to what most of you are going to be doing so this is this is less of a good wave it's it's pretty choppy it's pretty mushy and so i'm hitting it going pretty down the line and there's this this little section here crumbly section that's throwing i'm hitting it pretty down the line you know i've got my fundamentals but it's a little less perfect i'd like to see this a bit more sheeted out on the backhand i'm also not leaning totally into the circle, but get the good high five contact, right? You can see that happening right here between the feet. You know, see I've got the bottom of the board perfectly flat with the lip and then carrying that projection. And so I, I'm really not doing much with my body here. You know, I'm, I'm sheeting out, still sheeting out. I'm, I'm looking a bit where I'm gonna go, but really letting the energy of the wave pull me around and then I start to sheet in here as, as I've already rotated around and come down with the white water. And so we can watch that more in real speed, but I think this one is, is a lot more similar to um, the kind of conditions that you'll get in Europe. Um, so the kind of 360 that, that you wanna be doing for most people. All right, now let's look at some other 360s. So here's one from Philip Coster in Gran Canaria. And so you can see that he's got that same body position. And so these are very different conditions, very onshore, much smaller waves, but he's, he's getting that contact, right? This is right where the wave starts to pitch. He's getting that high five. He's got that fundamental positioning where he's got his front arm bent, back arm extended. He's leaning into the radius of the turn. He gets his hang time, gets in the air, waiting around. Um, he starts to pull the sail around. In these conditions where it's super windy and the waves are a bit smaller. You are using your sail more, um, but notice that he's not sheeting in too early. Um, there's a, a kind of a, a positioning that you do in these really onshore conditions where you kind of rotate your hips around. And so you can see it like here, his hips are pointing um, sort of up towards the sky and he, he's sheeting out. And then he's at this point, moment he's driving his hips around twisting his hips back towards the beach and starts to sheet in the sail um, but not too hard you notice that he's, he's not sheeting in very hard you know so he's, he's kind of bringing the sail in here you can see that but it's it's not the, this is the exact moment he starts to sheet in there um, and that's a bit earlier than these other places where you're using the wave more um, you know this is really using the wind but it's a, a valid form of a wave 360. Here's one from Mussolini in Pozo. Again, it's all about finding this section, finding the placement. He's got a lot of speed in his bottom turn, power in the sail, finds that section. He's got this fundamental positioning that I've been talking about, lets the wave bring him around, and it's, it's a perfect 360. Um, so let's watch this again in slow motion. So the wave is, is breaking, he starts sheeting in, uses the wind to help him um, in these locations like, like Pozo. That, can be useful. Here's one of Thomas Traversa in silt. So this is very onshore conditions, messy but powerful seas. And let's look at what's happening here. So again, the same fundamental position, right? Front arm is bent down towards the hip, wide grip, back arm is extended. Connects with the wave where where it's pitching. So again, this is this is a 360 bowl. So you can see that the wave is bowling up here and you've got this lip that's coming forward and shoulder to travel to. So that's, this is exactly the kind of section that you wanna do a 360 on. Gets up, gets that high five contact that's happening right here. He's still sheeting out, still really extended sheeting out, comes around, lets the power of the wave bring him around, starts sheeting in about here as the board is facing forward, comes on top of the rig, lets the power of the wave pull him around to come out of it. Um, again, you're really using the power of the wave. It's, it's, it's very, 
very key um, in, in the 360 maneuver. Uh, we've got one more here. This is from Holger in uh, Hands Thumb. And this is a, a pretty typical kind of 360 that you see like in, in Denmark and other places in Europe. And so I just want to stress just again, you know, how important some of these fundamentals are. So he's getting this high five contact that's happening right here. And this is probably the most important part of the maneuver. So if you're going to take away anything from all that I've said, it's that you want to get that high five contact. So it's about the timing and putting your board so that it's flat against the lip and the lip hits the bottom of the board exactly on the bottom of the board to give you that projection. He's, he's sheeting out, um, sheeting out as he's coming up to the lip. You know, he's got a bit of this fundamental position we're talking about a little bit different than, um, than some of the other ones, but, but close enough. And, and most importantly, getting that, that high five contact, you know, here you can see a bit more of that fundamental position, still sheeting out the power of the wave has thrown his board around a little bit upside down, but because he's got enough speed and he's in the power of the wave, he's able to write the board. He's able to just ride out of that. Um, and that, that position doesn't, doesn't mess him up. Whereas if he not had enough speed or if he wasn't in the power of the wave, so if he'd, for example, been sheeting in more at the beginning and lost contact with the wave, then he would not have been able to recover, right? So by being in the, the power of the wave, he's able to sail out of a, of a position um, that otherwise he wouldn't have been, you know, with the board upside down. So I hope that this has been useful. Uh, if it has been, uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, join our Facebook group. So that's Graham Ezzy's uh, windsurf coaching community on Facebook. And let me know what other topics you want uh, me to teach and to go into more in depth. Um, so post what you want in the comments. And was this useful? Was it not useful? Let me know. Um, and get out there and try 360s, try goose screws, and then post your photos, post your videos in the coaching group, and we'll discuss them and get you on your way to being a 360 year. Um, you know, I love seeing you guys progress and nothing gets me more stoked uh, than, than watching the progress through the coaching. So thank you guys and I'll see you on the live stream. Until then, take care and rip hard.